Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's so good to see everybody tonight at Four Winds Apostolic Church. If we could all stand right now and begin to welcome the Lord into this place and begin to praise Him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we want to create an atmosphere that you can work in tonight. We want to feel you, Lord, one more time, Jesus. We just want to be with you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, we praise you. Jesus is in this room here I am here I am making this place I said holy holy your spirit moves. 
you, but I'm so thankful that he's in control today. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm so thankful that I can run into that throne room today. I can run directly into his presence. I don't have to go through somebody else, but I am able to go into that throne room. And that's because he made a way, amen, for each and every one of us tonight. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and receive our offering tonight as we continue to praise and worship him. He's worthy of it. Amen. Anybody love him tonight? Could you pour out your love on him right now and thank him, Lord, for your hand upon our life. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we worship you. We exalt you, Jesus, and give you the praise that you're worthy of.
God we serve, amen. And I love to hear that name, Jesus. And just for a few minutes there, right at the end, I started hearing an angelic voice and it was my wife. And it kind of gives me the feeling that there's something worth living for God about. And I never make a deal out of this. I never say anything about it, but there are times when she gets in on the keyboard and in the live in the we call it the playroom. You can be seated. And she starts playing. And when she does, she'll start singing and occasionally it'll be that one of the girls will go in there, another girl, another girl. The next thing you know, there's just this music coming from the other room. And I just was thinking as I was over here, and I'm not saying I don't think they're going to have Congos in heaven. I don't think they are, I'm at least not in the marching part of it, which that's the part I want to be in. I want to be in, in that procession. I don't, I don't want to be standing. I don't want to be fixed to no spot when it comes my turn to give him praise. So I don't, I don't, if they got keyboards in heaven, I don't want one. Give me a tambourine. I'll take it. But when I began to think about Jesus, King of Kings, and I, I began to lift my gaze, it wasn't on the crowd, it wasn't on anything else, but it was just transfixed in a place where I believe that one day we're going to be able to give him worship and glory, not inhibited by nothing in this world, amen, the pain that we might feel in our body, we won't feel it, amen, we will be able to worship him. And I'm talking about, oh, what a worship time that's going to be. Nothing compares down here. Nothing that I've ever done in my life or participated in will compare to that time when we're able to give him worship. I want to remind you again quickly of our Level Up campaign. We're doing well with that. I just want to say this, that Sunday afternoon after church at 2 o'clock, we are supposed to take a group of guys over to uh, Hope Church, which is at the end of Russell, right across from Bucky's. Anybody who goes will go across there and get the drink of your choice within reason. Amen. It has to have certain ingredients can't be in it. No no look-alikes either, Daniel. And my brother Samuel were messing with us over the weekend, and they got these energy drinks. And Anyway, messing with us. I told Samuel, I said, let me see that can, buddy. <laughs> He's just chuckling. But we're supposed to meet over there at 2 o'clock to pick up somewhere between the, the, the number keeps growing and the price stays the same, so I'll take it. But somewhere around 280 plus 70 others that are um, uh, that are in a tucked away place, not sure what that means, but they're put somewhere. We have a dolly. They have a dolly. They're going to let us borrow this a special chair dolly, so it's not, it'll be made for it, so we won't be all just lugging chairs. So if you want to help with that, at least four to six to eight of us could go and probably make pretty short work of that. And if you have a pickup truck and you want to do that, it'll make it quicker. But if not, we're going to just keep loading them into the, uh, if you have an enclosed trailer or a trailer and it's not raining, we could use that. But we're going to make the best of it, whatever we have. The, the food bank trailer will fit quite a few of them. So we've already checked that. So it'll fit quite a few. We have dollies, so you're not going to be just carrying chairs, the heavy weight of it. So that'll be 2 o'clock Sunday. This weekend here at the church, we have boys, the men of valor. Young men of valor here on Friday night and on Saturday morning. So if you have someone that's supposed to be that has already been taken care of, they've already been paid for. So um, I hope that um, you'll you'll take advantage of the money that I've spent. So just come and enjoy it. Bring your son or whoever, a young man of, or above the age of 10 and up. We do make concessions. So there are a couple that might be here. There are a little less than 10. And so... This is an event where um, we're just trying to help other churches, amen, come and bring their, give a place for them to come and bring their young men. And it's going to be a great time. Brother DJ will be speaking on Friday night and Saturday morning. And then here on Sat Sunday morning, he will be speaking. So looking forward to that. And um, there was something else I was going to say, and it slipped my mind. But somebody said, it'll come back to him. It will come back to him. So but tonight, I've asked Brother Derek to speak, and he's coming, and we're going to let him take his liberty tonight and um, just let him speak to us from the Word of God. 
I was, uh, we were together this weekend at a music conference for worship leaders, and this is something else that's being kicked off in our, our district, and it's going to be a great thing. I think it's going to grow and grow and grow. And he just kept telling me, please don't, don't use anything we've learned today. Just please don't. And so I'll let him get his say tonight, and then I'll bring it back to you in a different light. So God bless you, Brother Derek. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. I'm glad y'all didn't clap. That would have made me real nervous. Amen. I'm just, I'm just messing. I'm just messing. I'm just messing. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I told Pastor, I said, it's, uh, actually, I think I checked with him. I don't know, it was Friday or Saturday or one of the two. I had to check with him to make sure that what he was going to be speaking on Sunday wasn't influenced by something that I also heard because uh, y'all don't like double dipping hearing the same thing twice. So, anyways, no, we're all good. Um, Feel God's laid something on my heart. If I could have a little bit more monitor, but if not, Brother Billy, we'll figure it out. It'll be fine. Um, but I've got a very uh, deep, I mean, this is a really deep uh, title for you today uh, for this lesson. Uh, this might be uh, a little bit more in-depth than you're ready for, but we're going to go for it. So everybody say this with me. God loves you, and he has a great plan for your life. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. Hallelujah. That, I know you guys are going to be pondering on that for quite a long while on what that really means because it doesn't really explain itself. Y'all can laugh. It's okay. Everybody on, everybody on the Lord's side tonight, we're all good. Amen. Everybody excited to be in the house of God tonight. Everybody excited to have an opportunity to serve the Lord today. Amen. I know it's a Tuesday night, but we still got to be ready to receive whatever it is God has for us. Amen. I'm going to do my best to be short tonight, to not take up much of your time, amen, but to teach on something I feel like was on my heart. God's love is important. How many know that today? God's love in your life is vital to your success as a Christian. In fact, we can't call ourselves Christian unless we have the love of God in our hearts. That's what defines us. It's what makes us different. From anything and everything else you may find out there in this world is the love of God that we hold in our hearts because we've received that same spirit. But the love of God is free. It's given and it's free. And I want to talk about how much he loves you today. So the question that I posed myself in studying was what is love? And love is biblically defined in the Bible uh, through the translation of two Greek words that are used uh, in the New Testament. One is phileo. P-H-I-L-E-O, which is also um, where we get the word, the word Philadelphia. We call that city of brotherly love. It's the same uh, concept from that Greek word. However, um, phileo does not literally mean brotherly love. It has a slightly different translation and meaning. And agapa, agapio, or I don't know how to pronounce it, but everybody knows that as agape, right? Everybody say agape, agape love. I had a lot of agape love in my life. Amen. I didn't, sometimes when I was growing up as a teenager, I didn't want them to agape love me, but that's all I got, so that's where we stopped at was the agape love. Anybody ever had crushes? It was a joke on crushes. It's okay. Y'all good. Y'all with me tonight? Amen. We're going to get through this. In Jesus' name. But phileo, to have ardent affection and feeling. Phileo denotes an emotional connection and attachment to someone. Often phileo is found with those we enjoy being around naturally. can also be described as impulsive. And so these would be the kind of people that you love because they like the same things that you like. It's very easy to love somebody when they do all the things that you, do, you like. They live the way that you agree with. You don't have very many disagreements. Me and Brother Daniel hit it off pretty quickly because he likes to fish and I like to fish. The only issue with that is he fishes a little bit better than I do. We're going to remedy that hopefully over time. I'll get better and better, but we have... An immediate, we can have an immediate love or develop a love for one another based on that. But phileo is very superficial. And biblically when it's used, and we're going to talk about it in a little bit, God even asks one of his disciples about their type of love, and they kept responding with the same phileo love. It wasn't the love God was seeking. Amen. But agapeo, um, or I don't know how you would pronounce it, but we're just going to call it agape from going on from here. Uh, to have esteem or high regard. An agape type of love is one of the primary characteristics of Christ and thus a Christian lifestyle. Agape love maintains a connection of care and concern despite differences. 
This is evident in Jesus' commandment to love, that word is agape, your enemies, which is found in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 44. We're going to read that together. Amen. The Bible says, but I say unto you, love your enemies. It's an agape love, not just a love them if you agree with them. Not just to love them if they do all the things that you like and live the ways that you agree with, but love with high esteem your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do not do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. You see, you can't superficially love somebody who persecutes you. Our, our nature, it just doesn't work that way. Humanity, we're very selfish. If left to our own devices, we're very inwards about what I can gain, what I can. So if we got stuff coming in from a type of love with a relationship, we're good with that. If my friend takes me out every now and then, if my friend does this with me, everything's good. But as soon as they have a difference, as soon as they maybe say something I don't agree with, if that love isn't deep enough, then I won't love them anymore. But in fact, I will despise them. And that's not the love that God commands over us today. Can I get somebody to say an amen? John chapter 21 and verse 15 through 17, we find Jesus and Peter having a discussion regarding the differences in these types of love and the importance of the type of love that Jesus has for you and for me. The first two times Jesus asked Peter about this love, asked, he asked Peter if he loves him in an agape type of love, meaning regardless of what happens, regardless of what I may do or may not do, do you love me and have high esteem and regard for me like I need you to have for anybody you may come against or, or towards in the future? Because, see, Peter couldn't see what was going to be in his future. None of the disciples could see what was coming down the road. They were still rejoicing. They had just been mourning over the death burial, and now they were rejoicing over the resurrection of a risen Savior. They had no way of knowing what was in that future, but Jesus could see that Peter would one day be crucified, that many that he was talking to in that setting may not live their full lifetime. Amen? And so he asked Peter, he said, do you love me with an agape kind of love? Not a love that just says, I love you because of what you've done over the last uh, the lifestyle of your ministry, Jesus, and not just because you kept our bellies full, Jesus, and not just because you filled this big old net full of fish that we just ate, Jesus, but do you love me, Peter, with a high esteem and for who I am, for the good times and for the bad times? Amen. So if we read here, I'm going to try to pick out which ones are which. So the Bible says, when they had died, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou and that love there, God is saying, do you love me with an agape kind of love more than these? And he saith unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love, but the word, the Greek word that Peter used right there was not the same kind of love that Jesus was talking about. The Bible, if you read the, the Greek translation, it, it uses those different forms of that love word in there, and they have different meanings behind them. And, and when Peter responded, he, he used the phileo version of that love. And he saith unto him, Jesus said unto Peter, what? Feed my lambs. Saith unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto me. And that love again, God is asking, do you love me unconditionally? Do you love me like I love you, Peter? And Peter said, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. But it was still that same phileo love, Sister Remillard, that was superficial, that would not pass the test of time. And God went and asked him again this third time. God asked him, do you love me, phileo? He used that version of the love. He said, do you love me again? Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, Thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love, love thee. And again, he used the phileo. Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. There's a whole, if you just read that and you read it in the King James Version, it's just a back and forth that takes a little bit more reading and understanding to figure out, okay, why was this so important to have this discussion? But if you take it back to the, 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 the words that may have been used or probably were used in the translation that it was taken from, the context becomes so much bigger because Peter had a love for Christ, obviously. 
He would not have followed him all those years if he did not. But Jesus was asking Peter, do you love me like I love you? Like I love all these other disciples, not just superficially, not just when the test comes and the trial comes and turmoil comes. Are you going to turn your back on me, Peter? He was challenging him and he said, you've got to have, the reason he kept saying, feed my sheep, is he was trying to teach Peter and the other disciples, you've got to have my kind of love to reach people. You've got to have a godly kind of love if you're going to be able to develop more disciples, more followers of Christ. And I was getting ready and prepared for this message, and I'm going to be honest with you, I had a whole other thing going on that I thought God was pulling me to and was on my heart, and it changed today. So that's why it's a little impromptu today. But I, I, I couldn't get past this. I just felt I was praying, and I was seeking God's face, asking for favor, and he, he, I just felt it on my spirit. It says, do they know that I love them? Do they know that I love them? Because you see, God's love will carry you a mighty long way. But it only will carry you as far as you will receive that love. Amen? John 3.16, the Bible says, For God so loved, again, agape, unconditional, the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 1 John 4 and 10, the Bible says, Herein is love, not that we loved God, this is all agape, love, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son for the propitiation for our sins. That kind of love can't be bought. That kind of love for another fellow human being, the love that you should give back to your God, cannot be wavered by money. It can't be wavered by influence. Thank goodness I would hate for somebody to have influence over God and change his mind on loving me. Amen? I, I really, and I'm not an accomplished teacher. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure these things out, but I really want us to understand how deeply, Sister Mary, God loves us. Because it's not just the casual love that I might say to a person that I see at, at Walmart. Yes, I say, y'all think I'm weird, but I'll, I'll do it. Y'all ever have those moments where you say something? And then you're like, why did I say that? I'll be walking in Walmart and I'll have a short conversation with a complete stranger. Um, my wife gets embarrassed because I'm always doing silly stuff like that. And then when I'm done, I'm saying, well, we'll see you later. Love you. Well, we'll start walking away. I'm like, I don't know that person from the end of the earth. And I used to kind of goad myself about it. Like, you only said, and I stopped doing that because you know what? People need to know that they're loved. Whether they accept it or not, it's not the big deal. But when I said that, I really do have a godly love for them because God has so loved me. Good job, Brother Derek. You quoted the Bible. It's there for a reason. He so loved us when he died on the cross and paved a way for us to receive salvation. We need to make sure that we're perpetuating, perpetuating that love to others in our lives. It's a line of communication. Amen. So what is godly love? It is vital and essential that we understand fully how God loves us. Firstly, we must grasp that the nature of God is love. If we turn to 1 John chapter 4 and 8. Amen. The Bible says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And eight verses later in verse 16. The Bible says, and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us, because God is love. And he, amen, that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. And so, Brother Derek, why is all this love stuff so important? Or, Brother Derek, I know, I know love is important. But I, I, I challenge you to take a step back and just think about the fact. Your God, the one you serve, the one you praise, the one you worship, the one you pray to, his very nature is love. It's not Brother Derek's words. It's the Bible's words. 
He expressed it in so many ways. And we need to realize that that love is as important as it is in our lives. It's so much more important in other people's lives. Especially the person that doesn't know true love. That's only experienced that phileo love. That's only experienced the hurt and the heartache when somebody they trusted and really appreciated turned their back on them as soon as trials came. And that's what this world is seeking is a true love today. Amen? Love exists within the heart of man because the Spirit of God flows through us and lives in us. Amen. God's love is everlasting, meaning it, it is constant and does not change. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 3 says, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Phileo love is, not, is often contingent upon the actions or behavior of others. However, godly love and the way God loves us is not predicated upon such contingencies. I know I'm, maybe I'm repeating myself a whole bunch, and I apologize if I am, but again, it, it's important because I feel like sometimes in my Christian walk, I say I love God, but I, I don't mean it the way that I know I need to mean it because I don't feel it like I know I need to feel it. You see, love makes you do crazy things. Love right now is keeping me from going over there and wearing that little girl out. No, I'm just messing. Love is what brought me to an altar. Not my love, because I didn't have any. But his love for me brought me to where I could be redeemed. You see, I couldn't do it on my own. And there wasn't anybody else in this world that could get me to that place but him. That's how much he loves you. Not us. I want it to be personal. God loves you, child of God. God has a desire to see you succeed. He's not satisfied with you going off and doing your old thing. He loves you so much, he's made a plan, and he has a will for your life. He doesn't want anybody else to distract you from that. God's love for you and I is free. Somebody say free. It does not come with qualifiers or requirements. Can we give a hand clap of praise for that? Amen. I assume if you want to even think about get, joining the National Basketball Association, you got to at least be six foot four or higher. I don't know, but I would assume so. If not, you, if you're under six foot, you better really know how to handle that ball. I'm telling you. You better have some skills. You, you have to really, have, there's some prerequisites to join any kind of major league in sports, physical, uh, mental, whatever it is. You've got to train your whole life to get there. You can't just show up one day to a practice session and say, hey, can I shoot around with you, LeBron? They're going to kick you out awful quick. In fact, you probably ain't going to be able to get in the door. For those of y'all who aren't sports aficionados, just ignore me. But, amen. What I'm saying is, is that, if God's love had all these contingencies and requirements on it, I don't think there'd be very many of us that'd be able to receive it. In fact, I guarantee you there wouldn't be. And so God gives us a free love, unconditional love for Him. Hosea 14 and 4 says, I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, for mine anger is turned away from Him. I will love them freely. But I want to take a moment... And pause here because as an apostolic preacher, I've got to make sure I put in some um, disclaimers here. Love does not equal salvation. Can I get an amen? Just because he loves you does not mean that you're going to be saved. God does not put a condition on his love for you, but he has set up requirements in which to receive salvation. In fact, without the love of God, the initial steps of salvation would be impossible because it was through his love for us that he provided a way of salvation on Calvary. And so if you're under the hearing of my voice today, I want to be clear on this. God does love you, but with that free love comes an expectation if you want deliverance. Amen? 
he gave us a free gift, the Holy Ghost. That's, I don't know how you, other than dying on the cross, which made a way for that to be possible, that's love. Not only am I going to die for you, but I'm going to put my spirit in you, and I'm going to comfort you in time of need, and I'm going to be there for you on a personal level. I'm not interested. This is God, y'all. I'm not interested in just standing up on a tower and watching above, but I want to be in you, through you, and a part of your life on a daily basis. That's the kind of love he has for you. But a portion of that's not accessible unless you decide to give your life over and make some changes and follow a plan. And so today, I want anybody and everybody in here to know God loves you, but he does have a plan for you, and he wants you to follow it. Amen? In our men's group uh, Sunday, and again, I'm not trying to, not pulling anything private, because there are some things we share in there that you shouldn't just share with anybody, but uh, we, we're talking about how we go through pain and how there are some of us who uh, have fallen away and come back to Christ, and we're so thankful for that. How many are thankful for a prodigal today that came back? And we brought up the brought up the story of that, and I was reminded that time and shared that uh, you know I put myself and I try to remember to put myself in the place of what that prodigal son must have felt like as he was coming back up that old familiar road, that road that he had grown up seeing, that road that he had probably played on many times. The road up to his house, his daddy's house. The house he had enjoyed for a long time and enjoyed the pleasures of and the freedom of and not having to worry about anything. And, and as he was walking back, knowing the disgrace he had left behind him, knowing the shame that he carried with him, and Pastor said he probably, I believe Pastor said he probably was on his mind just hoping that he could at least be a slave in his, in his daddy's house. He wasn't even worried about being restored. And, and I, I believe the discussion that I had in there was that we all need to be, we all need to have the spirit of that father, which is the type and shadow of Jesus. That's what the story was about, that he is a deliverer and welcomes us back. The unconditional love, that son, no matter what has happened, no matter what you've gone through, my love wasn't conditional on how well you kept your finances. My love for you, son, wasn't conditional upon whether you made a name for yourself in the city. My love wasn't conditional upon you being successful. And when that prodigal came back and expected maybe rejection or expected nothing, his father was op had his arms open and ready to receive. That's the kind of love that God has for you today. Many of you have experienced that kind of love. And as we talked about in our lesson, we can't forget what God has done for us. So when we start forgetting the love that God has for us, that things start to slip. Old habits start to reintroduce themselves. We start doing things that we used to do and we knew not to do, but we start doing them again because we forget how much that love covered in our lives. Amen. So how do we receive the love of God? Well, this wasn't a biblical revelation. This was just Brother Derek thinking and praying. But to be loved, you must receive it. And again, disclaimer, this isn't easy believism up here. Brother Derek's not going crazy. But to be loved, simply, you must receive it. Love for another is always legitimate and measurable by the one giving it. If I say I love you and I really love you, I love you. You can't change the fact that I feel like I love you and I'm telling you I love you however it can only be validated when the one for which love has been given receives it and my example is uh, marriage <laughs> I could love my wife till the day is long all day long every single waking hour of my life I could text her I love you I love you I love you I want to be with you I want I want to be next to you but if she never replied and said I love you too there wouldn't be no Abigail today or the Derek probably wouldn't be in Georgia there'd be a lot of things in my life that would have been different if the love that I was giving was not received and reciprocated that's how marriage works folks for most of us amen and, and today, God gives us free. We've already said it's free. It's everlasting. It's unconditional. 
That's the love that your creator has for you. Not only he created you, but he died for you. He didn't decide to wash you away again, but he died for you and made a way. But that love has to be received. I have to say, God, thank you for loving me truly and unconditionally. And I've got to give it back to him. And that's where I'm trying to work on my life right now is really having, Sister Mary, a love for God in my heart. Because it's not enough just to get up here on a pulpit and say I love God. It's not enough just to stand up and clap your hands and rejoice and act like you love God. Because you can fool me all day long. But when the time comes and judgment is ready, the question is not going to be did you, feel, did, did you look like you loved God. But it's going to be do you love him. I'm trying to keep this broad because there's a lot of things that apply in this love. There's a lot of things that are covered in that love. Because when you love God back, you start changing the way that you are, the actions that you do. Brother Derek, I'm going to go back to my marriage. Brother Derek's not the same man he was uh, in 2017 when he married Sister Teresa. I've made a lot of changes along the way, Sister Anderson. Hallelujah. I'm surprised she didn't say hallelujah back there. If I had maintained, even though I loved her with everything I was, if I had kept being the same person that I was the first year of our marriage, uh, I don't want to speak ill, but we wouldn't be in a good place. Let's just put it that way. Because her love for me, it was unconditional, but because we're human, it was a little contingent upon Brother Derek changing a little bit along the way. She saw who I could be. Can I get, come on, somebody, I mean, can I get an amen on that? He saw what we could be. He didn't marry us for what we are right now. Feel the Holy Ghost a little bit now. He didn't get interested in you because of anything that you did today. Just letting you know. I don't care if you're the most successful person that has ever sprouted in this, this earth. He wasn't interested in who you are right now. But God is interested in the plan that he has for your life and who you can be. But none of that's going to happen unless you can love him the way he loves you. That's hard to do, but it is not impossible. You got any proof, Brother Derek? Yep. I got a man named Brother David. All the way back in that old covenant that said, no Holy Ghost, that said no forgiveness, that said you got to slaughter an animal and hopefully you're good for another year, that covenant. But there was a man named David who found a way to love God unconditionally with an agape love. In fact, the Bible calls him what? A man after God's own heart. So it is possible today. Because whether you believe it or not, did you know you're greater than any King David? Did you know you're greater than any Moses? Not, not in the accomplishments. I mean, if we want to do that, we can, we can talk about carnal accomplishments all the time. But the power that resides in you was not accessible to Moses, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. The promise was, but the power of the promise that you have today, they did not have. So it is even more accessible to you today to love God the way that he needs us to love him, the way that he desires for us to love him. Psalms 119 and 30 through 32, it says, I have chosen the way of truth. I have set your ordinances before me. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. I run in the path of your commandments, for you will enlarge my heart. So how do we receive the love of God today? Well, I think David had an inside track because he said, I have chosen the way of truth. You have to choose to follow after Jesus Christ. And I have set your ordinances before me. I have chosen to follow the laws that you have and restrictions that you've placed in my life. Whether I agree with them or not, whether they make me feel good or not, I've chosen to follow them because I have put you first in my life. I cling 
to your testimonies, O Lord. I run, verse 32, in the path of your commandments. I'm not, not only do I set them before me, not only do I follow after them, but, but Lord, I mean, I'm running through them. I, I, I revel in your law. I, I, I am joyful and jubilant in what you do to keep me protected from this world. And what you do to keep me from falling on the wayside. God, I'm not upset that I have to do this. I'm running head first. Whatever you say, that's what I'm doing. That's how much I love and trust my creator. Do you love and trust God enough to say, no matter whether I agree or not, if the word says it, I'll do it. If it says to go left, I'm going left. If it says to go right, I'm going in that direction. But whatever God has planned for me, that's where I'm going. That's the kind of love that your creator has for you. And that's the kind of love we need to have for him. God is love. His very nature is that of love towards us. True love was demonstrated on the cross for us. And that demonstration not only saves us, but teaches us on how to lead others towards that same salvation. Fruit of the Spirit of Christ is us in us is shown in the love we have one for another. So it is vital that we not only love God like He loves us, but we love one another. Brother Derek, you've said that before. <laughs> Sorry. Y'all y'all been in church a long time. I'm sure you've heard the same things quite a few times. Because they're important. Anything in here is important. Vital. And that's the true testament of what kind of love you have in your heart for your God is the way that you love your brother and your sister, not just the ones sitting in here. It's, and let's be honest right now, it should be real easy to love the ones in here, but sometimes it's real hard to love the ones in here. Sometimes we get in these little disagreements with each other. Sometimes we hurt each other's feelings. And if your kind of love for God is very superficial, then as soon as something like that happens, you want to know what, ha what, what, what you'll do? You'll stop loving that person. But if you have an unconditional love towards your God and an openness towards his spirit in your life, a lot of times when trial and tribulation come up and a disagreement with a brother and sister come up, rather than going to them and causing a problem or complaining to the pastor about it or, or talking to your spouse, come on, can I get some married couples say amen, about how wrong they are, instead you'll find your knees at an altar in your home and you'll say, God, help me to love them as you love me. Because I guarantee you that God has seen you do some things that made him a little unhappy, that disagreed with what he had in plan for your life. I don't see God turning around and shutting the door in your life. Because we would all be lost if he did. But God continues to stand where he has always stood, at the throne ready to receive you and to love you unconditionally. And it's all throughout this Bible, church. We have got to love one another. It's my testimony at the end of this. I'm closing. And at the end of this, that, that's what I felt on my heart through this weekend, uh, more than anything else, was realizing that all these little bickerings and issues that I have with this person or that person, all these little things that make me want to complain about, well, this isn't right and that isn't right. That is not a true reflection of the love that God has for me and that he has put in my heart and in my life. I often feel that I fall short. This is my testimony today. I felt to share it. That I often fall short of the calling and plan that God has laid out in my life. Anybody else ever feel that way? That I have not been doing everything that I know I should be doing, that I haven't been giving it 100%, that I've allowed distractions and things to come into my life to consume my time and my energy where I don't give Often disappointments and a lack in my own self-discipline create an aura of failure. More often, I find myself so busy with my day-to-day -day activities, and my own wants and desires, that I become cold to the plan that God has for my life. 
And I've just come to the conclusion that I am constantly failing to realize how much Jesus truly loves me. And how much he truly wants to see me be prosperous in the path that he has laid out for me. Because if I could wake up and smell the roses and see that even though I may feel like a failure, in fact, in a lot of ways I am, he still loves me. His plan for me is still in effect. His desire to see me succeed and be what he's called me to be has always been there. And he's just waiting on me to say, you know what, I can put that down for for a while, for a season. I can put this away for a season. I don't have to be occupied with this. I can turn to God and focus on his desire for my life. I want to tell everybody under the sound of my voice, God loves you and he has a great plan for your life. So turn to your neighbor and say that. God loves you and he has a great plan for your life. Are you ready to receive it today? It's free, it's accessible, you can do it. Amen. So I have my notes for tonight. Because I do go ahead and get prepared, even when I ask someone else. I never know what's going to happen. So... There's something called a house divided. And I'm not talking about this house or your house. I'm talking about this house. And the Bible talks about the sin of comparison, comparing ourselves to somebody else. And this is the trap that we fall into. We look at our sibling, each other. We see that the love that the father has for them, and we become jealous. Well, they're not doing this, and it looks like God loves them just as much as he does me or or they're doing all that, and I'm not, so God must not love me as much. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So we become a house divided because he loves us, period. No questions, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He loves us. But when we start playing this game of comparison by looking at one another and seeing how God loves you versus how he loves me or how I live and his love for you still, we get into a trap, And then it becomes about me and you and not about me and him. And it's got to be about me and him. And when I love him way more than I love you, amen, you've got to love him first. You have got to love him first. If your love for your spouse comes before your love for God, you'll never love your spouse. They're getting half loved. If your love for your kids comes before your love for God, they're getting half loved. I didn't say the church. I said God. Amen. And it, they're getting the they're getting the short end of the stick. But if you'll lay all that aside and you'll say, I'm going to love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my might, with all my strength, that person will get the 100 percent guarantee of your love forever. But if we start playing with God, with, around with our love for God, we'll start messing up. Amen. We'll start thinking that something's owed to us, and we'll go to the Father, and we'll say, I want what's coming me, and we'll be gone out of the presence of God. And thank God that he does take us back. And he doesn't take us back as servants. We may come back expecting that's what we should get, but he don't take us back as servants. He restores us to our full capacity. That's what kind of God, and that's the kind of love he's shown us. And I want to say this tonight. If you love God like he loves you, you will sell out. This has been eating me up alive. You will sell out. You can drop a ball game. Thank you. I was worried about that for a second. You can drop something you want to do. You can drop something you want to wear. Come on, keep coming with me. Help me out here. It ain't going to get no better. You can drop something you want to be. Okay? I'm just, I'm reading, and I'm coming from a place where I got this. I was reading this the other day, and it says, How good it is to know that God has guaranteed to love you and to bless you. 
Isn't it exciting and reassuring to know that God has guaranteed to love you and bless you? But guess what? We often forget that those love and blessings are byproducts of how we love him and how we align ourselves to him. It doesn't come without a price. It does have a cost to it. People say you can love God as free as this. No, it's going to cost you something. To love your wife costs you something, buddy. It better have. To cost your husband, it costs you something. Amen? It's not free, as this world likes to uh, propagate today. If it was, we'd all just do what we want to do. But that's how people are trying to live for each other and for God. God does not promise to bless us where we're at. He promised us to love us when we're where we belong. Help me out now. His full love is still towards you. He is trying to draw you into a place where you can get the full benefit of that love. God doesn't love you any less when you're a sinner, but you can't go to heaven as a sinner. So you don't get the full benefits of that love until you change some things till you turn away from some things. And let me tell you something. There is nothing in this life that you will give up for God that you will miss when you get to heaven. Nothing. If your vehicle is coming between you and God, well, how could a vehicle? I'm going to tell you how a vehicle can come between you and God. You get out there every day and you polish that thing and it's your status symbol. It's your this, it's your that. That's a sin. Jesus help him tonight. He Thank God Brother Derek preached. Oh, it's a sin, amen? If it's, if it's such a status symbol for you that it's puffed up and it equals more than your love for God, if somebody recognizes that over your love for God, there's some, it's coming between you and your love for God. I'd rather drop that and leave that than to lose it. Now, I just mentioned something that's a token, an item, but there are things that we do to our bodies. There are things that we do in our lives that bring more attention to us than they do to God. And he's not pleased with that. Amen? And you can blame Brother Derek for opening the door tonight, but I'm telling you, God loves us. And I'm telling you, he loves you. But he's not, he says he will not share his glory with another. So if you want to share his love and the love you have for something else, no. Well, Lord, I'll love you, but please let me hang on to this. Let me just let me sneak over here every once in a while and look at this. Let me come over here every once in a while and go do this. No. Amen. Amen. You got to be careful with the things that your heart loves to do because your heart is desperately wicked, deceitful above all. Amen. And it will entice you to do things that feel okay. The two, two scriptures are just the same. This 1 Corinthians 10 and 23 and 1 Corinthians 6 and 12. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful for me, it says it again, but all things edify not. That's the first one. Then the second one says all things are lawful unto me, but all things that are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not. Come on now, this is the kicker here. I will not be brought under the power of any. You got a favorite pair of tennis shoes that keeps you out of the presence of God? Because it means so much to you that you're at home every night with a toothbrush. I'm I'm, I'm making it real far out there, guys. But there, there are some things so plain as the nose on our face that we do participate in, operate in, and take and partake of that that are just as silly as a pair of sneakers. And one day we're going to stand before God and give an account for the deeds that are done in our body, and He's going to say. But for this, but for this, and when I stand before God, and I don't mean to be disparaging when I say this because I love these people, amen, but I'd rather live like an Amish, amen, and to live like I live and miss going to heaven. And I'm going to tell you that even in that lifestyle, you can be so prideful of what you are and how separated you are and how this you are that you miss heaven. So just because we're apostolic Pentecostal tonight, we don't get to walk around with a puffed up attitude and say, well, I do this, I do that. Well, let's get into your secret life. Let God start meddling around in your secret life. 
Let him start meddling around in your time that you have. Let him meddle around in your phone. Amen. Let him meddle around in what you do when nobody's looking. If you'll let him meddle around in that, then you can say, I promise you, Charles Spurgeon reads some of his stuff. It says, you will not think of yourself higher than any man when you begin to let God into your intimate life. When you begin to let him speak to you about the little things that we are letting come between him and us. Oh, greater love hath no man than this, than that a man would lay down his life. I believe that we're laying down our lives for each other in this building today when we choose to live for God. I, I am responsible for you. The way I live, yeah, I am responsible for you. And if I want to bring something in front of you and flaunt it as if it was me, that can come between me and my relationship with God. I love you. I appreciate what Brother Derek had to say tonight. I feel like it was spot on, and I feel like it's what we needed to hear tonight. Why don't we stand and ask the Lord to go with us as we leave tonight, and then he would help us. I mean, How many of us would honestly say, I'm going to ask the Lord to, to get into my intimate life? I'm going to ask him to just, just start working on me. Lord, take your time now. I don't need a whole ball of wax at one time, but just start working on me about one thing that, that could come out of my life that comes between me and you. I want it out of my life. And he'll, he'll help you, amen? Pastor doesn't preach on everything. I can't. I can't make a line on everything because to make it on one person wouldn't be long enough for the other one, wouldn't be short enough for the other one. you got to go to God and ask God, please work on me. Lord, I love you tonight. I thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. Most of all, I thank you for the great love that you have shown me, the great love that you have shown this church. I pray tonight, God, that you would give